Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz, Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Wednesday, June 10th, Fed Day, now behind us. And I'll tell you what, it was pretty much a non-event. Uh, pretty much, uh, I'll try to paraphrase what Mr. Powell said today, but stay the course. Uh, not really looking to you know, change anything up until the, re until the economy recovers more. Uh, one of the things, a couple of statements that he said were, you know, a little bit, um, a little bit alarming. Uh, well, I don't want to say alarming, but just, we'll just say interesting. You know, uh, they did finally ask, why. I think it was like the last question. Like, I just kind of felt that this question was going to get asked in the, um, in the press conference portion of the, um, uh, of the event today, right, of the, of the FOMC. Uh, someone did ask, hey, do you think that there's a speculation bubble going on right now in the market or asset prices? I think it was was said and he said basically popping an asset bubble would would hurt job seekers so they're not in position uh, the way that i like to say it is the punch bowl right they are you know pretty much stimu still stimulating the economy and they can't really worry about what's going on in the stock market right now and the speculation that's happening in the stock market until they until the economy recovers remember the fed i know people like to joke and think that the stock market is what the Fed does, but it's not. They um, they are really looking to make sure that the economy is running okay. Now, of course, the stock market is a recipient of that, um, but right now they they want to get the economy on steady footing. So uh, I thought that that was really interesting, as the as the Q and A session is always basically where it's where it's at. Right? No, they weren't expecting any change in interest rates. <clears throat> and I think he said that they're not really looking to raise rates anytime soon, which, of course, is as expected uh, right now in this environment. But but really, um, you know, I think that's the main thing. And normally on these Fed days, you know, we did do like a nice Q&A session earlier today with members. But I'm always risk averse on Fed days. Sometimes they can really kind of shake things up. And if and if Powell says something that was a little bit out of what we got today. And again, I think today was one of the cleanest reports we've ever got in terms of, you know, the Fed basically just, you know, stating that they're they're staying the course until until the economy gets on a better footing. So, that's really great. So, it kind of leaves us with, you know, what kind of market are we going to have going forward? And I think for now, you know, we know that it's euphoric and we know like I've got the put call ratio behind me which got really like complaint the word i keep using is complacent when i look at the put call ratio right and i think the market is priced you know close to perfection or i said you know was priced to perfection kind of going into today so uh you know we haven't had any ma major volatility maybe there's something else that comes along considering that i think the market is i don't want to say is cl is pricing at perfection but but basically is priced pretty close to perfection so it could be something that we just don't know about. And sometimes, sometimes that, uh, you know, that, that happens. But, you know, the put call ratio moved up slightly to 0.56. I think it got to like 0.4. So again, a lot of complacency in the market. And it's really up to you, to you on how you're going to manage this. Uh, you know, I've long said, even though I think that the, that the market is kind of juiced right now, I, you know, what are you going to do? Sit on the sidelines and be like upset about it? I mean, I think the best way to to handle this market is kind of do what we're doing. You know, look for individual set, stock setups that look like they're breaking out of a base or breaking out of consolidation for a little while. And, um, you know, and tackle that name or, or, you know, tackle that group of stocks that's doing it. So, uh, you know, that's kind of the game plan. And, you know, we'll stick to that. Um, Am I going to get caught eventually on one day if the market's down? Yeah, a little bit, but I think the way that we're we're managing this uh, is you know is really good. Like I, you know, I'm I'm really cognizant about making sure that I'm taking off trades and not getting overexposed uh, into into this type of euphoric. So again, participation, continue to participate, and um, and just be mindful of your risk. You know, that's it. Um, a lot of so we'll go over a few different charts, but I wanted to talk about that put call ratio. Also, you know, I think a really interesting theme is playing out again, right? Last week we saw all the value names. You know, for a little while it, it, the value was really strong, and growth names kind of, you know, just really didn't do much, which is fine, by the way. That the growth names, while value was going nuts last week, uh, the growth names were just kind of hanging out. Some were working. 
Um, some others were just kind of like flatlining for a, for a little while. That's actually like a pretty good market to have where you kind of rotate back and forth. And then, of course, you know, if you look at the relationship, you know, this is large cap value versus growth. So we had this big move for about a week and a half, two weeks. And now all of a sudden we're coming back down again. So meaning growth is outperforming again. And if you look at the groups today, you know, first of all, look at the difference between the small caps, which didn't even do anything really today. We're basically unaffected. Sorry, when I say didn't do anything, there was basically no reaction to, to, to the Fed at all. You know, maybe because they just really didn't bring up any, any change in course, which again, I'm a little shocked that there wasn't some type of a hiccup today. But, um, but it, is, it is what it is. But they still finished down 2.7% for the day. And, um, you know, we could look at that IWM chart just to see where it stalled out here. Was it at the 200-day moving average? Well, we did get above the 200. But basically right here, let's see if we have anything on the weekly chart. I think we do. I think we, we stopped. Yeah, we kind of hit that bottom of value. Right now we're back out of it. So that's a pretty decent rejection. Again, the week's not over. We got Thursday and Friday left. It kind of feels like it's a Thursday, but it's a Wednesday. It's a Fed day. But yeah, you can kind of see we're still holding that trend line. But, um, you know, decent move back this week in small caps. But again, they were absolutely on fire last week. So, you know, that's somewhat normal. You know, I think what were small caps up like last week, like 8% or something. So, you know, it is what it is. They've had a really nice run the last couple of weeks. Um, TLT, I could put that in green. TLT has quietly been coming back. And we were talking about uh, that the bond ETF, and, and it's amazing because sometimes it may be a false breakdown. We don't know yet uh, because we're going to be coming back into the bottom of value here. But bonds have been really strong over the last week, you know, after this break below value. They've rebounded quite well uh, this week, meaning... Uh, bond prices going up and yields going lower. So I find that interesting. You know, a lot of other moves, you know, silver was a big mover today, but this happens on Fed Day. I, I just, you know, we'll see if this if this continues to run tomorrow. Notice that silver is just getting to the top of value. But these Fed, Fed Day moves are kind of tricky. Sometimes they're just one day moves. Uh, so we'll see. We'll look for continuation there. Um, gold had a decent day as well. Gold was up 1.2%. You know, maybe this gets this group going a little bit. You know, you got a nice move back inside value here for GDX. Again, nothing wrong with having a gold miner on. I've got one gold miner on in my uh, in the tactical portfolio. Um, you know, I kept it on. I I rebalanced that portfolio by the way yesterday, and um, you know, I didn't make too many changes. Um, I added Carvana. Uh, which was up nicely today, up 4.6%. Uh, I substituted out Salesforce, which actually had a really good day today. You know, I was a little bit, I got bored or tired of Salesforce and I got out of Salesforce and went into uh, Coupa Software and look at that, the other, and it performed the other way on me. That's okay. I still like having Coupa Software in there. I think it's a great company. So other trades, and, and let me just wash through the rest of this, um, let me just wash through the rest of this performance. But yeah, that was your best performer. Again, very typical on Fed days, big moves in gold, silver, uh, bonds, and maybe the dollar as well, currencies. Those are your biggest biggest movers usually on a Fed day. Um, software did quite well today, up 1.7% for the day. Chinese internets are also doing very well. That continues. If you look at this whole ETF, it's quietly been doing very well. A lot of people ask me about Alibaba today, but look at this Chinese internet ETF breakout, right? The whole group is doing it, not just one name. The name that I remain long is JD.com, uh, but, but I'm looking at, I mean, look at this thing go. Really, really nice. And then, of course, Baba looks pretty good too. I got a, like I said, I got a lot of questions about Alibaba. Big green bar yesterday, nice follow through today. So, um, you know, there's so interesting with this performance, right? You, you look at like if someone would have told you S&P down for the day and small caps down 2.7%. Um, but there was a lot of nice movers. So we'll go we'll go through those. Let me just rehash a trade that we put on. I'll tell you how funny this market is, you know, to, to try to be super disciplined. We were looking at this Microsoft chart on Friday. If you remember on Friday, that was the job surprise day, right? And you know, I just wanted to illustrate a point, like one of those conventional wisdom type things where when the market was up huge on Friday, right? I typically don't like to add 
much risk. When I'm, I'm usually like a big net seller, and I think I was on Friday. You know, I sold into the, into the strength on Friday, but it, let's say you, you let's say you got out of all your positions on Friday, right? Because we had this you know huge week last week. Well, look at what the market has done uh, since, right? So sorry, let me look at. Um, I've got Microsoft up. Let me let me look at the spy. Spy was up two and a half percent last week. You know, a, a, like I said, a monster week last week. And if you sold all of your positions, then you missed what was happening in basically the queues this week, which is a completely different story. So really interesting to see that rotation back into this. But yeah, I had started a position on Friday. You know, I've been I've been following this Microsoft digestion. Uh, for for a little bit, and I think I put on a trade in somewhere in here, uh, thinking that you know it might have been on this day, <clears throat> and I took it right off because I'm like, hey, it's it's just not ready yet. So you have to just basically, you know, and that's basically what I'm here to do is monitor some of these names, uh, you know, and as this thing went sideways and sideways and sideways, then when it breaks higher, uh, the more time that this spends in like consolidation in an uptrend. You know, the the more powerful the, the rally can get, but you know, up 3.7 percent today in Microsoft. So, really nice trade that we put together on Friday, and of course, uh, you know, I got the opportunity Monday morning to add to the position. So, you know, this was really nice. And then the other trade that we started too on last Friday was Tesla, and Tesla's worked wonderfully. And this is breaking out, uh, you know, or has broken out all-time highs today in Tesla. So this is one of those things too, and we went over this in the um, in the Tribeca Trade Group Q&A that we, we were talking about how to leave runners on. But, you know, really what I kept doing is, was rolling out the exposure. Um, and I think if you're trading options, it's a different story than trading stock because, of course, options are much more volatile. But if you're doing something like a call spread or just even outright calls, you, you know, rolling is a big thing in in um, in option trading. And you have to make sure you know how to do that. It's very important because when you have a, a position and especially like if it's a shorter term position and you've got nice gains in it, you know, it was, I think what some traders do you know, and I think like, again, more like on the retail side is they're like, hey, I've got great gains in this. Boom, I'm going to lock in the gains and I'm out. And then the name continues to run. And we've talked about this before. I'd like to talk about this a lot in videos because it's an important concept. You hear about it a lot. Let your winners run and cut your losers, you know, but nobody ever talks about how you do that right? It's, that's a lot easier said than done. It's hard to stay in a position when, let's say, you're in a call position that you got in five bucks and it's trading at nine or ten. You know, it's not easy to leave that position on because of the, the volatility component of options. Meaning, like so, something like today, like a Fed day, all it, all it could have taken was foul, uh, Powell to say something slightly negative and your calls, you know, the premium evaporates pretty quickly. So there's techniques to do like the rolling out and up, which we went over in detail earlier today, that can keep you in the game, but making sure that you're locking in some of those profits. It's a really important point and it's, and it's how you can really stick in a name um, that does something like this. Right, because that these are where big money is made is when things break out like this. Uh, so if you caught this one with us, congratulations. Or if you caught the, the Microsoft one, uh, but I'll tell you, there's this kind of stuff going on all over the place. And of course, you can't catch every single one of these, um, but there's a lot of them. Right? Um, you know. So a couple other ones. So so what else did we, we we caught this nice one? You know, I always start the day with my watch lists. Right. So. Um, what did, you know, where did we start with today? So this is kind of funny. I even said like, so I got into Square. Square was one of the names that I was looking for um, to one of these names that has had consolidation, right, for a couple days, right? And sometimes that, that's all it is. Sometimes it's like Microsoft where it consolidates for a while, but sometimes it's just a few days. You know, you had basically, this isn't an inside day, but um, just one, two, three, four days of basically consolidating these really two strong green days. And here we go again, you know, maybe we're, so I even thought that we weren't going to get a move today, but we got a nice 2.6% move today. But yeah, I, I will always start, um, you know, give it, providing a watch list for the day. And, um, 
No, I mean, look at NVIDIA Go. Now, full disclosure, I <laughs> this one, I screwed up. And everybody's allowed a little bit of uh, making a little bit of mistake. But I didn't want to have a lot of exposure going into Fed Day. So I took NVIDIA off. And uh, this thing went nuts today. It was up 12 bucks today. So, whoops. <laughs> so that would have really made my day. I had a great day, but this would have been a a super pleasant day for me today. But um, still holding AMD from yesterday. Took a target in that one. And XBI still is seeing some call activity. So, again, this is my watch list in the morning. This is part of the routine that we do every day. You know, put together a watch list of names, set alerts, and then basically, and then adapt as we see, you know, price action and different option activity, you know, trickle through in the day. But ATVI was one that we also saw some call activity in. Um, I think it's Sony's PlayStation Day tomorrow. So, I don't know if that's why they were buying calls. Um, but you do have some resistance coming up here at 70 487 uh, but this was a nice little trade today too so i'm very happy the way i am so pleased by the way and how easy the today's fed day was uh the fact that there's not a major change so we'll continue to kind of follow this as as uh as it plays out this service now is very enticing this was a weekend setup as well it just didn't have a lot of i mean this thing still finished up 3.3 percent for the day this was another one of our weekends uh setups and breaking out the 52 week high so you could see there just wasn't a ton of volume today in service now but it's the same story you know, big move up after earnings, consolidating, rolling up, roll, rolling down, rolling. And, and now it looks like it's starting to break out. So again, there's more things like this that we're continuing to find. Um, I mentioned Workday, you know, a, a name that had good earnings and kind of gave, filled, came back and filled the gap, the earnings gap. So I'm, I've got my eyes set on this 195. Um, and then there's, you know, so the list kind of just goes on. Twilio saw some end of day calls that went up. Is this thing ready for its next leg? It has spent, now again, it's a high level, right? I mean, this thing went in basically berserk mode uh, after earnings, but it has technically been digesting for a little bit. If you switch over to the one hour chart, which I use a lot, uh, you know, it is, it has a chance. It did close above value a nice volume at the end of the day. So I was actually trying to sell my last, I got, I've got some short-term calls on and I don't really like to stay in short-term calls, uh, but I was trying to sell at the last uh, second before the close and I did not get out of my last piece. So we'll see how that goes for tomorrow. I hope they're right because we did see some call buying on that. But again, it's kind of like one of our techniques. Um, I We see so, so many different trades on the tape in terms of option activity what the market webs indicator allows me to do is kind of overlay that option activity with the best chart setups you know and it really uh, you, you know melding the two together and of course i like to get into names before we see option activity right because it's so much more fun to get into a name and then all these you know momentum call buyers come out of the woodwork and and they're and then they're pushing the name um at that point so uh, I always like to get in before the call activity. So that's um, that's our trade blotter. Again, I always show you guys all the trades that we do, right? And um, you know, and that's what I'm wearing. You know, I took again. It's really nice. I, I went over this concept the other day about if it if a trade that I get into in the middle of the day or in the morning, and it's got a really nice setup to it. And if the setup materializes through the end of the day, meaning like if the name closes on its highs, yeah, by all means, if I was in it for a day trade, I want to keep that thing on for um, for a swing trade if it's if it's showing like it's going to break out of an area, right? Remember, like day trades are great and they're fun, um, you know, and scalping is nice, but you know the big gains are made in the after hours market. So if if it if it materializes enough. And where it doesn't give back, right? We see those candles sometimes where there's a big spike and then by the end of the day, it gives it all back, right? Then that ends up being like a day trade, right? And at some point, you know, you're going to hopefully sell before the price comes in off of that spike. And that's why you take targets. But if it remains high and, it, and it's breaking out of a level, absolutely do I want to turn that into a swing trade. So, um, so that's that for the day. 
Um, just one other quick note here we'll talk about. I got a question today on XLK. Um, but it's the same thing, XLK and the Qs. So I know people want to sort this stuff, right? People look at this stuff. I would say non-trend traders, right? They look at a chart like this and they're like, oh, this has gone up too much. I want to buy puts. Um, I'll tell you what I've learned, right? Because we saw that we heard the same thing last week and we heard the same thing the week before. Really, nobody knows how long a trend is going to last, you, you have to wait, in my opinion, and again, everything that we're going through here is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. <laughs> but nobody knows how long a trend is going to last. Nobody. Nobody has a crystal ball that's going to tell them, regardless of how confident they sound on TV that they know. No one knows how long a trend is going to last because you could go back and you can listen to people last week or the week before telling you that things were too euphoric and that you shouldn't be buying here or whatever. Um, you'll know, it, I know this is hard for some, but you sell when you get a sell signal or you put on a put trade when you get a sell signal. There's no sell signal here. Is it overbought? Yes, it is. It is absolutely overbought, but there's no sell signal here. You know, maybe this last gap up is, is a little bit euphoric. And again, I don't know what we, we can what we're gonna do tomorrow. We could wake up and we could be down for some reason. But there's just there's there's no you know there's nothing telling me in this chart. Um, the price action has been above the five day moving average now for a couple weeks and for the majority of this swing. When I see something like that you know, when we start kind of coming in and maybe as at some point, because I do think this five period moving average is pretty extended away from the 20. So I do think at some point this five and the price action comes back to the 20, but I'm not going to predict it when that's going to be. Um, we do know regardless, and I know people won't tell you this, but the call act, all the call activity on the tape, right? Which is, we talked about the put call ratio. Eventually the call buyers will be wrong. You know that, right? Some people like to play this game on Twitter when the market tends to go down. They're like, oh, the, the option activity, it's the option activity, oh, it's not good. It's, it's not good today. I'll tell you, the option activity on the call side has basically been the same the last two weeks. And it's going to be the same way when eventually this market corrects. That's not an indicator. There's always going to be that momentum call buying as long as the market is going up like this. It's just how it works. So, Yes, yeah, sometimes you will get a little bit of an insight where they start buying a lot more puts and a lot more protection. You know, we sometimes we will, you know, you do get that heads up. Um, but they were buying big Q's puts about, you know, two or three days ago too, and nothing happened. So um, you just kind of have to keep that in, in the back of your mind that these momentum call buyers that we're seeing on the tape, they're not going to, one day they're just going to be wrong. Right? They're not, there's nothing, nothing is going to change with that. Um, they're, they, I know people like to use the term smart money. By the way, that's bullshit. Uh, it's, they get caught just as much as anybody else, right, when the market turns. So just keep that in mind if you're reading option activity and noting all this call activity. It's not, in my opinion, it's not predictive. Um, it'll, it'll be call activity until, until the market, you know, you know, changes directions. But don't worry, someone will tell you and say, oh, well, that day the option activity wasn't good. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll leave it there. Have a great night uh, tonight, and I'll see you guys back in the room tomorrow morning.